everyone, this is Darshna Sagar here on behalf of Dress My Craft and today I am going to show you all how to create this very beautiful delicate rose. This is a rose and made with the Dress My Craft rose flower dye. So these are life size roses. You can make these flowers with different mediums. So we are going to learn how to make it with the coherent sheets. You can also make these roses using the soft oriented papers and you can see how beautiful they look. And you can also create these flowers using the fabrics. So you can make different different mediums to make these roses. You can either use permanent sheets, you can use papers or you can also use fabrics. So how beautiful they look in each of a different way and you can create different different shapes also for the same. So let's get started creating this very beautiful and delicate rose. So after seeing all the products that we need to create this very beautiful and dainty and delicate rose, let us see how to use these dyes. So these are the dyes. There is a set of four dyes. So this smallest one here is the first layer of the rose, the first layer or even this is used to create these beautiful and cute buds. Then this one is the second one, second layer for the rose here. This goes number two. Then we have the third size that is this, this goes number 3 and here we have the largest one, the biggest one, this goes as number 4. So in short we have 1, 2, 3 and 4, all these 4 combined together will give you a very beautiful rose down here. Then we have this leaf, this is a calyx. So the calyx goes here down exactly underneath the rose and it looks very natural and very 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 realistic. And thereafter we have a set of three leaves. So this adds on to the foliage in giving different sizes to the leaves and how beautiful these leaves look like. So here this is the biggest size, then we have the medium size and then we have the smaller size. So now let us get started with the die cutting, the coloring and let's have fun. Enjoy, let us enjoy creating this very beautiful rose. So let us see how to go about with the die cutting. What have I done is I have just taken the white foam sheet and I have pre-cut out the foam sheets as per the size of the die. This is a cute easy cuts machine and this flaps open down here like this and these are the two platforms. You place the platform here and you will be taking the die. The sharp edge of the die faces upwards. You place this down here and you can also have two dies together. That is also a quick job. So you can place this, you can place it here and simply sandwich the die in between here like this and we start rolling. Here you go. So here you see very beautiful cutouts are ready. In just few seconds you get crisp cutouts and this makes your work a bit faster. So I will quickly finish the remaining ones. So once one our die cutouts are ready, let us start with the coloring. So for coloring, I am using these artist soft oil pastels. Please note these are oil pastels. So the shades that I am using for the edge of the petal is 213 periwinkle blue. So that is almost like a violet. Then for the inside of the petals, I am using 242 that is olive yellow. That is a nice pastel green. Thereafter, I am using a little darker shade of a green. I am sorry, I do not have the other part. It has got misplaced. So this is a nice uh, sap green. This is for the leaf edging. And this is a middle shade of a grey. There are three shades of a grey. So light, it's not the light, it's not the dark. This is the middle shade. These two are used for the leaf. And along with this, we also need baby wipes. So we will be pulling out one 
wipe. And keep it handy. Before you start coloring. So, step one, let us take the first petal and I have the green with me here. I will scribble out the green on the craft sheet. So, this is a craft sheet from Trace My Craft and these are available in thick and thin both. Any one you can use it. Craft sheets are very useful for many purposes. If you are doing mixed media or any crafting, you can use it on the table. So, what am I doing is with the help of my baby wipes, I am lifting the green shade here and I will be shading it down like this. So this is how you can do the shading very softly and very mildly and you can see how well the colors blend with each other. So this is the best part of the baby wipes. Here you go. Right? Now, we need to also color the edging. So to color the edging, first of all what I will do is <coughs> clean out the excess water that has come out from the wipes or else you can squeeze out the excess water at the beginning before using them and we need to scribble a little bit of violet down here so all that you need to do is just fourfold it lift it i have taken very little because this color is already very very dark shall i zoom it for you all to see it close up here so all that you need to do is on the edging just rub it on the top edges pull out some more color if you need it in case if you fall in short here it is and just rub it on the top edges you will be coloring the front and the back both that's very important because both the sides of the petals are going to be seen right so this is how we will be coloring all the petals of all the sizes here this size this size this size everything now let me show you all how to work with the leaves for the leaves once again first of all we need the gray so i will clean up the wet area you can remove excess water or the moisture from the baby wipes. They are best to use when they are semi-dry state. And I scribble down the grey and I lift the grey with the help of baby wipes here. And you start shading with the grey. The grey is very much in the center. Here. It is a bit darker at the base, so rub it twice at the base. Now the green, I will scribble out the green down here. This is a little sap green kind of a nice leaf green. And take the other side of the baby wipe. Pull up the green shade and simply color on the edges. How wonderful this looks. And you can see very beautiful. Here, just rub it on the edges. This also has to be done on the front and on the back, both the sides as well for all the three leaves. Coming to the calyx, that is here. <coughs> if your base has water, wipe it out. Very important. And even for the calyx, the edging is green and the entire calyx is green. So once again, I scribble out the grey. This is the middle shade of the grey. And where did my grey go? You can use the same side. You can do one color at a time and finish off all the petals, all the calyx. So from the base to the outer side, we will pull out the grey. You need to scribble some more grey here. Pull out, lift the grey on the baby wipes and you color it like this. I find this very easy method of working and very neat and very smooth effect you get. So if you all have oil paints, you all can even use oil paints but please don't, don't take too much of a quantity, take very little. They also work well with the foam. And repeat for the dark green. So pull out the dark green area here. Let's see if the color that's available. Yeah. So if you have the color enough, do not try to rub and reload it. Let's finish off what is there already on the wipes. At the same time, we don't want it to dark here. So scribble down. Push in between the 
between your fingers and rub it here. So here you can see how well the edging. Do not worry about the unevenness. It will never come. It is always going to be a little thick somewhere in a thick something somewhere. That's the nature of the shading because uh, we are doing it with our fingertips. That is never going to be in our control. You will never get a very uniform line and it shouldn't be because it let it look natural. Again, I need the green. So here you go and you get the green here as well. So this is how we have finished coloring the calyx, the leaf and also the petal. So you can see the calyx, the leaf and the petal. All three will be colored in the same way for all the remaining sizes. In the screen, I could see a little bit of a patch here and that's okay because we are anyway going to blend it once you're going to heat it. But sometimes if you find the patches too dark, then you can simply blend it with the help of wipes. Because when we start, we give pressure and maybe towards the end, it's all about blending. How elegant this looks. So once I finish these petals, we'll start with the embossing. So coming to the most exciting part and that is the embossing. So for embossing, we need the iron and the iron temperature should be at moderate, that is medium. So if this is minimum, this is maximum, it should be in between. So that is at number three, I will fix it up and you put the iron on, right? We will need the heat resistant tweezers. They are excellent for using it when you are going to touch something on the hot surface or you are going to use heat guns with it while doing mixed media or doing shrink or anything like that. Also, we will be needing the ball tools. These are important for giving the stretch to the petals and giving a nice cupped shape. So these are stainless steel ball tools so you can even use these ball tools depending upon the size you can take up. Then we need the groove golf tool because I'll be using the back end of the groove golf tool to create veins onto the leaves. And this is a soft embossing foam pad which has been covered with a cotton sleeves. So these, this is going to help us to give veins to the petal and the cover has been given on this so that it becomes the heat does not affect the embossing foam pad. This is the soft one. So first, let us start with the petals. Let me start with the small size. Hold this with the heat resistant tweezer. Place it right on the center of the iron and you can see it has started shrinking and it has started curling down. Yeah, so that is the time when you take this immediately out from the iron and start pleating. Once you start pleating and after this, we will take this Hold the top and the bottom and twist it. This tip twisting is very, very important. Twisting from the top and the bottom. When I take from the top, it goes on the opposite side and the bottom comes on the inner side. So one facing the left and the other facing the right. Scrunch it very, very well. Do not give over pressure or else your petals might tear. So see how beautifully the wrinkles have come, how beautifully the creases have come. Take the size of the ball tool and stretch the central widest part of the petal on the ball tool. This gives a very good stretch and you will see a cupped petal down here like this. So this is called a cupping. Once you have done with the cupping, with your fingers, all that you will need to do is simply bend the tip and roll it up because the petals of the roses are a bit curled. So take the tip on your fingers of the edge of the petal and curl it up. This curling is very, very important and this is possible with hands only. So once you have curled it up, once again round and deep in the petals. So all the petals will be curved just with your fingers, like this. So curling the petals after your cupping is very, very important to all the petals. So this is how we will be curling the petals and this is what will make the rose petals look so very natural. Like this. this is already started looking like a bud. How cute. Then I take the second size exactly in the same manner unlike the first one let me give you a close-up view so i place this here and you will see very soon this will start popping out once it has start popping out it will start falling down here so this is again the time to pull it out from the iron and start pleating once you have done your pleating you will take this tip and twist it like this from the top and the bottom both that's very very Important. This is very very important here. Now you open the twisted petal like this 
and you take the wall tool and take it one of the next size and stretch it. When you stretch it, be gentle, do not pull it too tight or else there are chances this might tear because the foam is still hot okay, and it is thin also. And now once again, take the top edge of the petal and curl it. Take the top edge of the petal, fold it on the back and curl it down like this. Roll it with your fingers. In case if you are not able to do it with your fingers, another method is take a tweezer and simply roll it. Once you roll it, it is going to be a little bit easier for you all to curl it down like this. So once this is curled up and you will take the ball tool once again and do it. So you have curls on both the sides. This also again looks so very natural curving to the petal. Coming to the third size, this also is the same. Sometimes you might feel the hot, the heat or the temperature of the iron is moderate and it is neither too hot and not too, you know, uh, cold. So what in, in case that you should do, just pull it up high, hold it for a few seconds and then place your petal. Do not place your petal when the temperature is high. Somehow I felt the heat is not enough right now. So I just put it on high, maybe for a few seconds, like say for seven to eight seconds. And now I can sense the heat. Again, I will bring it back to the medium temperature and then only I will take my petal down here. So you can see this has immediately called up, right? The previous one did not. So here you can see now, I again repeat the same step, start pleating it, start tip twisting it. Like this. The twisting is very, very important down here. Once again, open up the petal. I will now take a little bigger size of the ball tool and I will press it down here, like this. Opening up the petal is very important. I will try to take help of the bigger size as well and I opened up the petal. Now, help the tips of the petal fold back and then we will be curling them on the outer side like this here. Curl it up, fold it and roll it, fold it and roll it, fold it and roll it. So how natural do these curves on the back look like? I don't see the need of ball, using the ball tool again but I will do it just to refresh the petal. Excellent. Now the last one, how fast it has gone. I will just heat up the iron a little bit for a few seconds. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that should be enough. And this is going to help me get the petals. Wow, you can see how quickly they have curled up. So here you go. Please keep your iron at a safe distance from you so that you do not burn yourself. Pleat it up like this here. Hold it, tip twist it. Tip twisting is very, very important. Give good amount of pressure. No, do not over pressure or do not stretch it or pull it. You are simply twisting it by giving a mild pressure so that the petal gets ruffled. Here you go. So please note if this is a wider side and this is a smaller side, if you are taking it on left, for all of them taking it on left. If you are taking it on right, take for all of them on right. So whatever you do, do it uniform for your throughout the plant. Don't make one on left and the other one on the right. I mean to say this is the wider area, this is the narrower area in the petals here. So if you are keeping this every time on the left, keep it every time on the left. Same thing even for this. If you are keeping this every time the wider side on the left, then every time your cupping should be like this. This is a very small but a very uh, important point to be noted. Otherwise, you will always get, you know, a different look. So now here, we start curling. Here you go. This, you can even curl it sideways like this. This looks pretty natural. So the curls need not be straight every time. They can be even sideways. And how beautiful does that look? So here again, the petals have been curled up. Yay, this is ready. So this is petal number four. That is the biggest size. Then we had the petal number three. That is the third, second last size. We had the petal number two. And here we have the tiny one. Yeah. This is done already. So we will complete this very fast. And now I will show you all the calyx and then I will show you all the leaf. So the calyx is also super simple and very, very, very easy. Place your calyx on the iron here like this. 
so the heat is a little less i will put it a little fast for a few seconds see one two three five six seven and that should be done yeah this is good enough so now you place the batter here and release it and you will take two of them together and tip twist it single of them together and tip twist it one of them you can individually do it it's very easier to do it individually so tip twist these petals like this and this makes them look so very natural nothing more to be done and we will be simply then making it a cup and then sticking it so this is ready like this and now let's start with the leaf so we'll take the big size of the leaf first place your petal on the iron i've just put it fast for a few seconds because i want that amount of heat but not for a very long time when you're doing continuous work do not put it on high for a very long time otherwise your petals will shrink heavily and you will see very tiny size comparatively again let it come back to medium temperature here you see how quick this embosses and you place this on the soft embossing pad here take your groove ball tool take the back end the pointed end and pull a straight line in the center this is the vein and now from all of these ends from the out to the in start pulling in lines create veins let me zoom it for you all so create veins like this give pressure at the beginning towards the end just reduce the pressure correct you can go as close as you want that is absolutely your personal choice do not use the edge of the groove tool otherwise you'll end up tearing them so use the sides of the groove ball tool the pointed edge that will give you an advantage once again in the center pull out the line and here you see how beautiful the leaf looks like isn't it so these are rose leaves and the veins look pretty nice let us see the second one also so for the second one once again i will place the leaf here it has opened up and it is ready to go down so this is the time when you first give a line like this now whether you go from in to out or out to in it really doesn't matter this is all depends upon your level of comfort as convenient to you you can use it whether you go in to out or out to in it wouldn't really matter much so this is basically you are creating an alphabet a and making sure that the veins are in same angle like this once again from the top to the bottom pull up vein down here so again your second one is ready and i will finish the third one very fast it's a tiny baby so here you do place this and it has popped up very fast do not worry even if you feel you know you have taken a little extra time no problem the foam is soft it allows you to give those veins even when it is not hot but without shrinking you cannot give these veins because i have seen you know then they do not stay for a very long time but after you shrink and you give this pressure immediately in few seconds the veins will stay for a longer time so here you go this is also ready so finished we have finished with <coughs> three leaves the calyx the largest petal the medium petal the small petal and the tiny one so now we need to complete all of these and we need to then get started creating the rose so here you see how beautiful this looks like isn't it so let me come back completing all of these on an average 15 15 15 pieces of all of these for the flower rose flower and one calyx is enough and maybe you can have five five leaves for your bunching you can create as many as you want for your bunching
and here comes the most exciting part after you have finished embossing all the petals so 15 15 15 petals of all the four sizes are ready and to begin with we will be using this 14 mm styrofoam bud this is a pointed styrofoam bud for the list of the supplies and the links please check your description box below all the links have been given there and now i will take three petals of the first layer that is a small size and the first petal will just cover up the bud here the first petal will only and only cover up the bud and at the same time you can keep a scissor handy with you all so that you all can keep cutting the extra petals as and when required so step one your hot glue should be ready and we have a little bit on the tip i'm not putting too much at the bottom so here you go this is the first one close it this is just to close the bud and this comes here so to make sure that this sticks well down what we will do is we will bring this glue down here and stick it remove the excess glue do not worry it is not going to show closing the tip is very important in case if you see that the tip doesn't close well then you need to just close this better correct the glue should not be seen at the tip here right now what i will do is i will remove this excess petal because i know everything is going to get covered this is not required so whatever is excess we will keep cutting it parallel down here these small small things trouble now we need in total three petals the first one comes exactly in the center of this joint so the first one comes here do not go too high do not go too low it should be just enough in level and i will stick the right side and i will leave the left one open because the third petal will go and coincide inside so what i will do is only on one side i will apply glue place this part exactly on the center here and you hold this here and i will stick this because these are tighter buds right this is just the beginning center so we will not leave it we will stick it here as well as you proceed please remove the excess glue now i am placing the glue here the second petal goes exactly 50% half with the first petal over it down here and this one also closes down inside right so this also gets a little bit tighter look like this so you take the glue you apply the glue and you bring this down here right these small small things they will help the rose look natural now the third one goes over the second inside the first and it also closes well so what i will do i will put little glue inside as well as a little outside both the places so that first of all i'll push the petal going in and then i will place the petal down here right now this side of the petal is open this side of the petal is open right so all these three petals need to be stuck step one take this petal here and first stick it this is the first petal then we will be putting glue on the second petal here and the third petal here like this so the center bud is ready once again i will cut off all the excess petals that are not needed anyway there are going to be so many layers we do not want excess accumulation so you cut this out and remove it correct now i will be taking only five petals so five plus three eight and one nine in total nine petals have gone in the first layer i'll be a little choosy about my petals i want the ones which are well curled so in case if you don't find them well curled just curl it up with your fingertips sometimes the curls do open up so no problem we can always curl them i'm selecting five petals this is the reason why we make some extra petals so that you can select as per your requirement some big some small some open some close here right 
so I have selected five to six petals, but I need only five. The first petal goes in. There are three joints, so any one joint you take exactly in the center here, halfway. Once again, unlike the previous one, only on one side we will be putting the glue and sticking this petal down here like this. Please make sure you are in level. Don't go high. You will spoil it. The second one goes covering up the halfway the first one. So I am putting glue down here because the entire petal is going to stick. Make sure that you are in level. You do not go down. Correct. Now the third petal goes over it here. Wow. So this becomes your bud. If you have to stop uh, for the bud, then I think this is the perfect layer to stop for the bud. This is the right time to stop for the bud. Since I have put glue at the bottom, I stuck it. So I have finished placing three. This is the fourth one overlapping the first one. The previous one, the third one, not the first one. So here this is the fourth one. Correct? Now I have the fifth one and the first one is going to open up and I'm going to put the fifth one. So I open up, I put some glue up here and I take this and I further open this because I want it to go in more and here you go. So this is how you get a center of the bud. Like this. Correct? So this is how you form these beautiful roses. So for the bud, you can just stop and here we will be putting the calyx and this is how your bud is ready. If you want a bigger bud, you can add one more petal. I find this petal needs a little support to stick. So I gave it and I applied a little glue. Now coming to the second layer. So these strands will always travel. We will have to help ourselves to remove them every time they come. Coming to the second layer, these will be probably five or seven. So let us see. Here you again start with the first layer a little bit higher. Don't go too higher, just a little bit higher. And uh, as usual, I will be sticking one part of it, not the whole thing. So I just place glue on one side of the petal and I close it like this. Yeah, got it. And now. The second one overlaps the previous one, right? I'm not putting the glue too much at the bottom. The third one overlaps the second one halfway. You can see the rose buds are growing, how beautiful they look. Third one. So here I have next one that is the fourth one and here you see another beauty like this. I think this is going to close with five pieces only and thereafter I have the fifth one and the last one and that also looks gorgeous. I'll open up this one little bit so that this squeezes in and then we can close it. So this is also a good point to stop for the bud. So you have a bigger size of the bud. If you just give one single layer the way we did, you will have a closed bud. If you do after that a second layer, you will have a second size of the bud. The previous layer where we stopped, you can have the third size and this is the fourth size. So once again, I will cut off what I do not need. Here you go. This is ready. And now, so we have just used five petals of the second layer. Now we move on to the third layer. You can have one more layer of this. If you want to make your roses bigger and bigger, you can have, let me see. Ah, 
I don't think so I have given but I think I can add one more layer let me make a bigger one so I will add I decided to add one more layer so I will start at a joint here in between the two down again starting with the one side take the petal here I have taken the second size only I haven't taken the third one again I'll be choosing the one I like this also overlaps so that's a good decision to open the rows and make a big rows now So I have finished placing four and here goes in the fifth. One, two, three, four and five. Finally, I have one more petal that is sixth. Very good decision. Brilliant. Here, this is done, and look at this. The first one is almost halfway open. Perfect time to stick the first one. Here you go. Awesome, amazing. I'm very happy with this. Area. So now, just try to press it a bit harder, and now all that you need to do. Cut off the excess that you do not need. So we are done with six and five, eleven petals almost. And now we will be taking the next one, the third layer. Sorry, the fourth layer. Size is third. Okay, before closing, check your petals. Do they need support? Not really. Okay, so now coming to the third last or the third size, let me start at a joint once again here. And now the petals start falling apart, they start opening. So we will be having glue a little bit more at the base on the right side down here, like this, right. So now let me take the next one. Second layer overlaps the previous one almost halfway, unlike others. The third layer also opens halfway. Like this. How well these petals have started opening. Make sure you are sticking it like this. Do not stick it close, otherwise, the petals will not open. The fourth layer. Awesome. Gorgeous. These petals have started opening. And now this is most likely the last petal to me, it looks like. Oh yeah, that is the last petal for this layer. Awesome. And we close this. So to close it, apply glue on the first layer and stick it. Once again, here it's your choice. 
if you want to grow the rose a bit more bigger then we can add a layer now i will not cut it what i will do is i will simply stick these petals going down here because now they need to get covered or else they would show when we stick the calyx So this looks neater at the base as well and now it's a time to add one more layer. Now this is our choice whether you want to continue with the same as one more layer or you want to put in the last one. So I think I would like to put this one too. I would like to go with the last one now, not this one. So I take the last one and I give one layer down here. Okay. I think I go back and I will take one more layer for this. But I need to just open up my feet that it's they are called back. This might happen sometimes, it's natural. Quickly roll up your petals if they trouble you like this. Okay, these are well curled. Let's begin. So let me start from here. So here is the first layer. Like this. After that, I have the second one. Yeah, that looks wonderful. Here. Here after we have the third one. This also looks gorgeous. We have the fourth one. Like this. I just take a pause to clean up my hands. It's difficult to work with these close strands. So we are almost towards the completion of the rose and this is the second last year. Are you all enjoying it? I'm sure you all are enjoying it. Watching this beautiful formation. I will open up the last year. I am so very much having fun making this. I really thoroughly enjoyed even creating those samples. These are looking just gorgeous. Which is the most satisfying part is the last part. When you see your final projects ready or when you see your final hard work ready. And here, look at this, how big the rose is, rose is looking. So now we are just left with the last size that we can have a single layer or a double layer. Once again, it depends upon us how big or small we want it. So now let me pull out the last layer. So only one petal is left. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have used here and one, two, three, four, and five, six, and five, eleven. Yes. So these are only eleven petals for the third size. And now let's go with the last layer. So first check the place which needs the most uh, better placement. So in this case, I think this person needs here. So I will fill up this gap. Always check your gaps. Every, every time you will always have a gap and that happens naturally because all the petals are not uniform, right? So this spacing and this gapping will be will differ from person to person always. 
So now the petals have started blooming and they are falling back and how gorgeous this looks like, isn't it? So your foam needs a lot of support. You can't leave it all alone. This, this particular uh, product needs a lot of support system. So you cannot leave it open. Now, let me put the glue into the next one. I'm putting the glue halfway. I'm not putting the glue too high. Here, this now placement will not go exactly halfway every time. This placement will vary as per your look and your requirement. So do not go every time halfway now in the last layer. Judgmentally, it could be halfway, but otherwise it may not be halfway. So here you go. Wow. Be careful if the glue is too hot. Yeah. So I am just visually going by the top view and I am placing it. I am not seeing the back, I am not seeing it, it is halfway. Yeah. Right? So now I need very little glue. So you take the petal, place it awesome. Look at this. How gorgeous this looks like. So this is the fourth petal so far. And I think I should be done with one layer of the last one. Now coming to the fifth one. Here. After this, we have the sixth one too. Make sure you press it well and keep checking from the front, the angle, the space end, the position, the fall, the distance between the two petals is going to play a very important role here. And I think, let us check, if you aren't sure, always try to place your petals. So one and one more, I will have one, two more in short, one will go underneath. Awesome. Gorgeous. Yeah. Like this. And here comes the last layer in which we are going to overlap it. Sorry, that's here. So I'm going to put the glue quite a bit longer. If you notice. And here comes the placement for the last layer down here. I think I will have one more. Because this petal is shrunk more, it isn't that wide enough to cover up the whole thing. Yeah, so there is a gap between here, right? So what I will do is, I will add one more down here. The good point is also that you can um, put the glue gun on the petal base if you aren't very sure about the positions. So that this glue strands do not touch your hands. Now I will take the glue here down and place it half up 50-50 up and 50-50 down. So this gives a perfect closure to the rose and how gorgeous this rose looks like. Interesting, wonderful. And now 
we will take the calyx so i have two petals left for the bigger ones and i won't cut any petals but i will make sure that i clean up all the glue strands that fall back but before i do that most important step we need the stem to get a bit more stronger before you put the calyx so what i will do is i will take around 5 to 6 wires and I will first take 3 wires at a time and I will take a thread. So to strengthen your stem, all that you need to do is hold these wires here at the top and tie it up with a thread. So you just take any cotton thread that you have and what we will do is to begin with I make a loop and take a double thread tie tight very important and then just start tying it tighter again at the top give a knot for more security and then start coming down like this so what i will do is i will quickly finish tying up this wire till the last and in between then I will add these three and again thread it up so that it adds more strength. Don't take all six together. You might, you know, slip off one of them. After that, I will be taking this green tape and wrapping it up and then I will come back with the calyx because until then we will not put the calyx. This end has to get covered up very well. Apart from that, also what I will be doing is we have our leaves ready, right? So you can cut the wire one by two, one by three or anything as per your length requirement and you take the glue, hot glue, very little, just insert the wire in the nozzle from where the glue is out, place the wire at the base, pinch it, how interesting, right? Same thing, you do it for all the sizes. Here, like this. So you can have a smaller length of wire as well. Correct? And now what I will be doing is, you can take the same size two pieces or three different sizes or all three same and one small into medium, anything as per your requirement and you place this one here the other one here like this and the third one like this correct and now you will hold all the three together and bunch it up so you can bunch your leaves as per your requirement if you want the second one starting from the top then you start punching from there. Leave the tape, cut it off. So this is set. And if you want the third one coming from down, then start bunching from here. If it is not comfortable to take all the three together. This will also add a good amount of strength. Make sure you pull your tape, stretch it tight have my bunches ready here I have made two, two petals of same size the bunch is ready one or two I keep it extra in the end so sometimes if you want to add up in your arrangements you can do that as per your requirement correct so let me quickly tie up the thread and I will do that Yo -ho! So yeah, this is ready. Wow, look at the stem, how perfect it is. And of course, I, I cannot hold it vertical, otherwise it will be too close to the camera. So I will just bend it timing till we finish our work. Now, I take my calyx here and I will simply wrap it around like this, one over the other at the end here. So now I will see which is the space that needs a covering. 
so the space that needs a covering we will just go a bit more closer to that correct so now what i will do i will place the glue i need a stick so i will place the glue a little bit inside here on the ends so that you have enough glue to stick the thing come down close it overlap it yeah one above the other oops i'm sorry i stretched it a bit too high so this is what happens with the foam be careful be gentle i will quickly put glue here and i will stick it so you won't come to know the joint so these accidents yeah all right so we have finished sticking the calyx down and we have also finished making the leaves and it's all about adding them to your punch and here you go so i will keep all this aside so that you all can see gorgeous this looks like isn't it you can bunch up these leaves onto this flower here and see this is the bud that i made and this is just calyx covering it so this is how you can cover up the calyx and you can take one of this leaves here place it down here and apply wrap it up with a green tape here. so you take the green tape wrap it up so you can keep them in the vases you can use it for your home decor you can use it in your offices you can use it at multiple places so as much as you want to grow the bunch you can add stems only with the buds you can have just the roses unfortunately i'm not able to hold it particularly here in this video but this is how beautiful these rose blooms look like thanks for joining us thanks for watching us and please do leave your valuable feedbacks after watching the video and for all the products do click on the description box below happy crafting enjoy creating beautiful roses hey guys thanks for joining us thanks for being there i'm sure you all have enjoyed watching this beautiful rose making video and now i'll be waiting to see you all making these and posting your pictures in the comments below please do leave your valuable feedbacks in the comments below and do let us know how much did you all enjoy the video and more of that i want to see you all completing this very beautiful rose and posting your pictures thank you so much once again for joining us thanks for being there